feels like he belongs to someone else. Gentlemen, I got to see the first episode and this is an action TV show, let me tell you. So I'll start with you, Sebastian. Do you think that you had to do more getting prepared for this one or was it about the same as doing the films? I mean, it felt the same in the sense that they always feel big and they always feel like a big challenge and an undertaking and so on. And there's a familiarity to that. But I think here it was a little challenging just because we knew we were taking these characters into new territory and exploring their past finally and their a day in their life. So we needed to kind of make sure that what Anthony and I think is funny generally uh, is funny. <laughs> Yeah, y'all have a great like 80s uh, buddy comedy thing going on with this, with all of this crazy action, but there's a missing presence in this one. And so Anthony, I want to start with you about, you know, sort of moving on both of your stories past Cap and what you were interested in exploring this time around. Sam's backstory for me is really interesting because of uh, the great Stan Lee and how he created and evolved the Falcon throughout the course of the comic book for uh, the Marvel Universe. Um, so bringing uh, Sam into the new fold after the blip in a new reality, seeing how he reacclimates to society was something that I was really excited about and interested. I, I was really interested in, uh, you know, cracking that open and seeing how, how and what that would look like. I love that. I think folks uh, are going to get to see both your characters in a different way. And I'm not going to relitigate the whole shield thing because I know y'all have done that. But Sebastian, do you think you could take the mantle for America's ass? Because we did an interview with Anthony where he was very certain that he had America's ass locked down. Do you think you could maybe take that mantle if he takes the shield? You do not want to go against the round brown, homeboy. I have to say, I have skipped one too many leg days in my time to be able to keep, keep up with the thighs of oak <laughs> that are sitting out there in New Orleans as we speak. And I got to tell you, those squats, they keep things high, high and tight. <laughs> so, I well, count me out. Count me out. <laughs> well, uh, I, again, that's, and that's Evans, great. I mean, listen, he, he might have those, uh, he might have those uh, biceps, but he ain't got nothing down there. <laughs> so we're both out in the, in the desert. I appreciate your honesty. Um, they're wrapping me pretty soon, but I definitely <laughs> wanted to ask you this. That's what I Is about it. <laughs> moving past not having the shield, what do you think uh, Bucky's going to be trying to sort of figure out this time around since he doesn't have the shield? There's something interesting, I think, in his story too, right? Oh, no, of course, his place in the world, you know, and, and his connection to sort of like the times that he's finding himself in and, and, and letting go of the past and moving forward and obviously a new friendship, you know, uh, and, and, and expanding his horizon, so to speak, you know, he's kind of like a bitter old dude in, in a way, like he, and he needs to sort of grow up a lot. That show represents a lot of things to a lot of people. You know, coming after the sort of like phenomenon that was WandaVision, I'm wondering, uh, folks are wondering if you're gonna have some WTF moments like lined up for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Well, I hope so, absolutely. <laughs> are you kidding? Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's the, the weekly episode structure though, you know what I mean? Like this whole idea of like going back to the way people used to watch TV. How did you guys maybe approach that from a storytelling um, aspect for, you know, again, something that's gonna be on Disney Plus, but you know, still have that like sort of week to week waiting for it to come out sort of anticipation. Well, it's interesting because of course you, you know, you want to leave the audience with sort of breathless. So we definitely chose, we, we made it like a movie though. If you watched all six together, it will feel like a six hour movie. Um, so it, it's cohesive that way. But then we kind of sliced it up um, at the at the sort of perfect moments where you uh, are standing going, what next? Wow. You know, so um, that it, it obviously is worth waiting for the week. <laughs> Otherwise, so hopefully people will, will feel that way. But um, but yeah, so we definitely, you know, we're very conscious of, of how we left each episode. What will be interesting is, you know, with the anticipation each week, 
and the conversations, it's really um, fun to see, you know, the engagement, which I, I'm thrilled about. So one vision, you know, hopefully we're as lucky uh, in terms of, of people just talking. I think you will be just a little guess. I'm not going to yeah. go out on a limb here, but uh, so you're going to be checking the hashtags, I'm guessing, right? Like, see Are what you kidding? Of course. <laughs> I, I won't be posting though. I will. I will be quiet. <laughs> just let it. Yeah, all just on. lurking. Lurk. That's exactly. the best way to do the internet. Um, so yeah. bringing it back to Baron Zemo, because obviously I don't blame you for wanting to get Daniel Brühl. I would cast him in you know anything I could. But why that particular villain um, for these two? Because I do think it's a, an interesting um, sort of setup, making him the big bad. Uh, well, uh, do we know he's the big bad? Do we know anything about Oh, oh look at you. You are good. <laughs> well, bringing him back, what was the thought process for wanting to bring him into the fold? Uh, just that he's a very interesting character. Uh, this is a very complex story uh, that has uh, twists and turns. And as part of his narrative uh, and his backstory, it folded very nicely into our big themes. And so, um, you know, he offers a lot as a character, uh, you know, not only, uh, and he also offers a lot uh, in terms of the, the, the Bucky Sam dynamic and, and their, their conversation, their ongoing conversation. Well, I would ask you the same question about Sharon, but I think they've trained you guys too well. And so you're not going to give me anything away. But um, let's talk about something you can't talk about. And that's working with uh, Sebastian and Anthony, who are just, they're kind of a buddy comedy anywhere they go. But just adding them to this, I, I knew that this was like such a perfect combination to give them their own big story. So yeah, talk about working with them. Well, you know, they're terrific. Uh, the, both of them are super professional. And, uh, you know, even though they do love to, um, uh, you know, set each other up and laugh and all that, they come to set so prepared and very thoughtful about their characters. You know, they've been living in these characters for many years. And so it has been a thrill to be part of seeing them and be, uh, you know, supporting them in finding the new, the new nuances to these characters. Because for the first time, we, we go behind the curtain and we really see who they are and we get inside Bucky's head and we get inside Sam's life. And, and um, these were places that they hadn't been to with the characters. They'd never had the time, um, you know, just the straight real estate to, uh, to, to go there. So we have tremendously strong performers who, um, who you know, pick up, the, pick up that baton and really um, make us care. And I, I think it was, that's gonna be something really thrilling for the, uh, the fans is how much time we get to be with these characters. Because unlike the movies, he, you know, I call the movies the snacks and we're like the meal. And um, mm. so we get to you know, really savor. We also don't have to go in a straight line from beginning to end. We can, we can wander, we can go with the characters on a few different, a few different paths. So twists and turns are, are um, you know, gonna be our friend. Oh, I'm just going to say you're setting up all kinds of timeline things for me when you say it's not going in a straight line, but we will wait. We will see what happens. Um, but if you could maybe talk about like, since you can't talk specifics, what's some show that folks, if they say, hey, if you were watching this show, you're going to see a lot in um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Maybe just kind of give people a little bit of a taste of what they might do, even mm -hmm. though obviously it's its own thing. You know, it really is. I, I honestly can't uh, point you in a direction on that one. It honestly is its own unique thing. I mean, we did, uh, in terms of the buddy cop of it, um, uh, you know, we did a lot of looking at relationship movies uh, in that sort of genre from the 70s and 80s. Um, so that we, we, I, think, I think that would be more the paradigm uh, because... We are on a ride with these two very unlikely people who have some common, there's, there's a, a common thread to their existence. They've experienced many of the same things. They've, they've, they're, they've both lost a very good friend. Um, so uh, there is a commonality between them, but, uh, but just like the buddy cop of it, they also aren't actually friends and they don't necessarily want to be friends, um, even though they're kind of stuck together. So. Uh, I would say it's more that uh, than a particular show. I, I do think um, it is very Marvel. So it will have all, and yet it's, it's evolved because it's a very uh, grounded world that we're in. 
So it's it's evolved to a, a place um, where we can be with, as I said earlier, that we can be with the characters and we can go on journeys with them, um, but it's all very real world. And so I think the other thing is relevance, that um, we will really feel the conversation. We're having some deep conversations about the shield, um, about a black man carrying the shield. Does he want to do that? Does he, what does he feel about that? Um, you know, how does Bucky think about that? And, and what is, uh, because everybody has a different experience with the shield uh, or has different opinions about the shield. How relevant is Captain America at all? You know, what, what is all, so we really unpack some very interesting um, issues uh, at a time when this conversation is incredibly relevant. Wow, I'm, I'm very excited to see that. And, you know, I know that, you know, you mentioned him and I obviously he's not going to be present. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe he'll be present in the series, but I think Cap's presence will be felt throughout this. So if you could maybe give us a line to sort of encompass how he will maybe sort of influence the show from his absence even. Well, I think that's, that's the way to think about it is that he, um, you know, back in at the end of Endgame, he started a chain of events um, and we are the chain of events. So by definition, uh, he's a friend of, of two people who miss him. And he, so he's always, he's always present and he's in, in some form because they're, they're navigating the fact that they lost a friend. Symbols are nothing without the women and men that give them meaning. Uh, Malcolm, congratulations on the show. It's going to be the first show after WandaVision, though it wasn't intended to be that way, but I think folks got very much primed for WTF moments with that show. Um, do you guys have some of those in store for us this season? Absolutely. It, it, it is born from the same stock. Um, um, and, you know, Marvel knows how to do that better than anybody. Yeah. What was it like doing that sort of episodic writing again? Because with most streaming services, you know, you're doing it intended for, you know, a binge. But with Disney Plus, there's going to be folks sort of tuning in week to week. Have you guys made it feel more throwbacky in that way to those old school sort of like long crime dramas? It, it's, it's interesting, like the storytelling is all interwoven and one continuum over the six episodes. Um, um, the debate on how to release them as far as like one at a time or a binge was had in earnest with Kevin and everyone uh, uh, over at Marvel. And the decision really came from a very pure place of how that like everyone involved with these projects are fans to the core. And so they feel like if we can satisfy our own experience, we know we're going to be satisfying the fans experience. And that's how they decided on the week to week. But really, the, it is it is one long story with these with, with with them, like each the individual episodes go together seamlessly. Excellent. And uh, let's just say, you know, they're bringing back Baron Zemo for the first time. Just kind of curious. Uh, what's it like writing for that character? You know, more than like a cameo, obviously, like an entire series. It was great. Like he, just like Bucky, all of these characters showed up with so much baggage that had been left, particularly after Civil War, right? That we knew what we had to attack with them. Zemo is really dealing with the fact that his country was destroyed by his city, which killed his family. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the belief that superheroes and supremacy go hand in hand and it's just not healthy for the planet. Um, the crazy thing was we, we created sort of a playful character with Zemo and Daniel Bull just took everything out the park. I mean, <laughs> man, he's cold. <laughs> yeah, I think most folks got introduced to him in Inglorious Bastards, but yeah, he's he's an incredible, incredible actor. Uh, joined by you know our Falcon and Winter Soldier, Anthony and Sebastian, they have just this natural chemistry. Is that something that you're like leaning into in your writing? Like how how is that sort of sprinkled throughout? Because you can tell even from the first episode, this is going to have that sort of like '80s, maybe '90s buddy cop feel. That's exactly what we was going for. And how you how can you deny it? You know, the second everyone saw them together in Civil War, I feel like this series was inevitable after that moment. You know what I'm saying? 
And what we try to do is position scenes and scenarios in a way that they understand them so well that they can play with them because it is electric and, you know, it's worth a billion dollars just to have two people that have that kind of like jazz together, you know? Yeah, it's very, it's priceless, literally. You can't really sort of like recreate it. Um, just really quickly though, because this is such an action show, how are those written? How far in advance are those action sequences written? Or do you just put parentheses, big explosions? Oh, no, 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 no. We, we those action sequences are broken down in detail, but not only that, we approach them by putting character story, like a thread of like, at this phase of the action, the, it's affecting the characters in this way. By midway in the action, the characters are responding like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, so there's a whole mini character story happening in each set piece. Then you hand them to the geniuses at Marvel and everything you thought it could be gets magnified by a million because they take it in their own direction and freak it to the ninth degree. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to steal that line. Freak it to the ninth degree. I'm, I'll credit you, but I'll probably not. Um, All good, girl. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about Cap, though. Obviously, well, as far as you're gonna answer me, we think he's gonna be pretty much absent from the series. And so folks are curious how that sort of ghost-like presence is gonna sort of affect these two, these two it's, heroes. It's funny, you're keying in on all the main stuff. Um, this entire series is defined by Cap's absence. Where post blip, Thanos is gone and half the world's population has suddenly appeared and spun the world into chaos, right? And that's the kind of problem that only Cap really is equipped to solve. And then on top of that, you have villains who are responding to that absence of Cap and this chaos. And then you have heroes who are not only responding to those villains, but are in their personal life uh, dealing with the fact that they're, they had a mutual best friend in common. He's gone. They don't even know if they're friends now. You know what I'm saying? Because Steve's not there to do it. So the specter of Cap is in every scene and defines the entire series. It's interesting that you mentioned that um, they, they don't know if they're friends because it's like a kind of an odd couple, literally. Like they're very much like, this one doesn't like this about this. This one doesn't like that about that. And so are there any other properties that maybe you could point folks to to say, hey, if you want to know what flavor to look forward to in 100. this event, what you got? Here was the bullseye. It was 48 hours, lethal weapon, bad boys, right? That's where that's where we pulled from. That's what I'm saying. Like when you talked about the buddy, the old school buddy cop thing, I'm like, that you nailed it. Oh my God. All right. I'm I'm gonna say that I'm psychic, at least in the kind of a this is probably not true. <laughs> um the uh the Anthony and Sebastian pairing, it really felt like peanut butter and chocolate, like two things you didn't know went together so well, but then once you did, you don't want to ever take them apart. Can you think of any other pairings? just in the MCU or period, maybe you'd like to see um, sort of maybe the next chapter, maybe some folks teaming up. I thought I would like to see a Tony Stark and Nebula story. That's just me. But is there anybody you'd want to see team up? There, there are characters in our series uh, uh, who I would love to see partnered with like, that's a, it's a very, very grounded character partnered with one of the big, uh, what they call them, the world shakers, you know what I'm saying? Like Thor or someone like that, you know what I'm saying, who hasn't moved on because the personality is so strong. It's the episode five character. I'd love to see that character with Thor. All right, folks, listen ahead. Pay attention to episode five. Also, I'm going to steal world shakers to reference the sort of, sort of big uh, heroes in the Avengers. That's a great way to put that. Um, lastly, you talked about Kevin Feige. And obviously, you know, there were Marvel television shows prior to this, but I think he was very particular about what he wanted in general for telling these characters episodically. Can you maybe talk about how he wanted it to change or did he even make any changes? No, it was a mandate. And that was one of the things I am most proud to have been of. We are most, I should say we, it's not even an I. Kevin said, I want each episode to feel like a movie. This should not feel like TV, not just as far as the spectacle, which you see is off the charts, right? But movie storytelling has a, a has an intensity and a compressed time to it, right? And event quality. 
So he said each episode has to feel like a movie, yet when you accordion across six episodes, it has to play as one continuum, that serialized storytelling that you find in The Wire, Breaking Bad, or any of that stuff. And we worked very hard to find a hybrid so that it did not feel anything like TV. Um, um, and really honored the fact that we were working with Marvel, the people who make Marvel movies. So we're partners, co-workers. Not necessarily a team. No. We look damn good, though.